Hola, welcome to Butterfly Spanish. Me llamo Ana Tortuga Banana, and in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you everything, or almost everything, because sometimes I forget because I get distracted sometimes. Some birds cross here and, all, and I get distracted. So I will teach you almost everything about the H in Spanish. I will teach you, I will give you all the secrets, the gossip, the adventures, the history, and everything you need to know about this strange letter in Spanish. Um, let me tell you, let me start with the secret. Well, first I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you the secrets and then I'm going to give you two scenarios so you can distinguish the pronunciation and, and the sound. And then we're going to um, go through our list of vocabulary so you know how to pronounce it. And at the, at the end, I will give you some tricks as usual and some examples and some good expressions to use uh, this letter. Very well. My secret is, it's actually not a secret, but the H in Spanish, la H del alfabeto en español, is the only letter that doesn't have a sound. It doesn't have a sound. It's mute. We call it, we call it, I call it, many people call it the mute H because it doesn't have a sound. So. If it was all the story about this letter, then I'll be done now. Okay, it doesn't have a sound. Okay, then I'll go home and cry. And I don't have anything to teach you. But guess what? Well, I have something to teach you because there are a few examples. And also because there are um, some parts of the history of this letter that make it mute. You know, it's not, it's not mute just because just from one, uh, one day to another, it became mute. It's mute because of history, it's mute because of the words, it's mute because the letters come from different languages, etc. So let's start. Now, we know now, because I just gave you the secret, that the H, la H, en español, no tiene sonido. No sound. We don't pronounce the H. It doesn't have a sound. You see how, for example, I say, Mamá, mamá, tengo hambre. All those letters, have a sound. But when I say tengo hambre, that word starts with an H. And I'm not saying tengo hambre, I'm saying tengo hambre. You see? Because that's the only letter in Spanish that doesn't have a sound. And here there are many, many words. I looked for you, words that I like, words that I, are useful, that even though have an H, you'll see it doesn't sound. And you may think, oh, why is it there? Well, we'll see why. And then here we have some three words. Maybe there are more, for sure there are more, but very few words that are written with an H. And they have a sound. What we're going to see is that these words come from other languages. And these words, even though come from other languages, the languages where they come from have been, um, these words have been adopted from years and years and years and years of history of language. So let's start. Let's start with the words that have an H, but es boda. It's mute, doesn't have a sound. Let's start. And first word for the H, I wrote here an H, mayúscula, capital, we call it mayúscula, and minúscula, minúscula, no. Um, uh, lowercase, lowercase, capital, lowercase, mayúscula y minúscula, same thing, they are mute. When I say, hola, welcome to Butterfly Spanish, I'm like, okay, yeah, I, I already said that. But when I say hola, I don't say hola, I said hola, even though if you write it, you're going to write it with an H. If you don't write it with an H, what are you going to say? Wave, hola. You see, when like you dance, like... Hola. But if I say hola, 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 that's different. Hola. Now I'm going to say hermoso o hermosa. For example, someone of you wrote Mexico, Mexico es hermoso. Well, I hope you didn't say Mexico, 
es hermoso, because then you would be wrong. Uh, why? Well, because even though it's hermoso, you don't pronounce hermoso, you said hermoso. And you might be wrong because maybe some parts are not hermosas. <laughs> but let's hope everything is hermoso. Hermano. Now, this is a good one because a lot of my students, they say, oh, sí, tengo un hermano, mi hermano. No, no, no hermano. Hermano. O tengo una sister. Hermana. Hermano o hermana. Okay, brother or sister. Hielo. Yellow, you know, the cubes of ice. Yellow. Yellow is ice. Yellow. Hector. Hector. My brother's name is Hector. Yes, Hector. And maybe you remember uh, the movie Troy, right? Well, the history too. Maybe you, wrote, 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 you, you read the uh, Ulysses and everything. But when Brad Pitt says, Hector! 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 Brad Pitt wants to kill Hector because he killed his cousin Patroclus, right? Well, my brother's name is Hector, but because I, like my, my, my mother gave him that name in Spanish, I guess like, I know in, in a judge or something where you like give names to your sons or something, it's Hector, not Hector, as Brad Pitt called his enemy, Hector! Okay, so now you remember, if you meet a person say, whose name is Hector, Hector, no Hector, <laughs> now, I'm like, now my R is changing, oh, I'm becoming more English, <laughs> Hector, very good, hotel, hotel, now, this could be tricky, right, just as historia and hotel, because if you say it in English, you wouldn't, you're going to say history, and if you say hotel, you're going to say hotel. So because they are so similar, in this case, the same, you're going to think, oh, it's the same, it's a hotel. Mira, un hotel. No, but if you want to be like, oh, no, I know, I learned in Spanish, then you're not going to say, oh, mira, hay un hotel. You're not going to say, oh, mira, hay un hotel. No, right? Because the age is Silent, mute, very good. Uh, oh, and I read that this uh, word comes from French, huh? Interesting, I, I, I haven't read a lot, but I'm, I'm going to, and I'll tell you more about it. Now this um, heroin, right? Like the Breaking Bad uh, series, I haven't watched, but they do something like that, I think, right? Like they do like, oh, I don't know, some drugs or something. So heroin, I say, we don't say heroina, <laughs> heroina, uh, huella. Huella is uh, either footprint or fingerprint, but I didn't have space, so I said, no, I'm just going to tell them. Footprint or fingerprint. So for example, if you're going hunting, that I hope you want, right? You won't go hunting, but in the case, in the imaginary case, um, you have to follow the footprints from like the uh, animal you're looking for. I don't even know why I'm saying this because I'm just completely against it, but just to give you an example. Uh, huellas, right? Las huellas de los, so, ah, no need to run. No, I would go like, ah, and go back right away. I would go back to my house. Hazaña, hmm, hazaña, we don't say hazaña, hazaña. And it's a very, um, not, not very, not a very common word because uh, hazaña is usually, you know, in the medieval times or the heroes or the superheroes have hazañas, like adventures, achievements that are full of, um, enjoyment or full of uh, uh, yeah, adventures, like they get something through different problems they encounter, hazañas. Very good. Huracán. Now in Mexico, in the Gulf of Mexico, we have so many huracanes. Yes. Once I went to a town and a hurricane had just passed and it was very destroyed because it's the coast. And not only, you remember New Orleans, Katrina, all those hurricanes too um, that happened in the world. Say, huracanes, huracán, uno, huracanes, when you're talking about many. Uh, huérfano, o huérfana. So huérfano is a, a boy or, or a male person who doesn't have a, a, a mother or a father. 
and huérfana is a, a, a female, huérfano o huérfana. Uh, for example, my father died when I was eight. I was huérfana at the age of eight. Very good. Uh, humiliate, humillar. Oh, that's not a, not a very nice word. But, you know, a lot of people do it to other people. They humillan a otros. For example, um, uh, a la gente, so some people, they like to humiliate other people to feel like superior, to feel like they, they are something special, something like privileged, right? So I hope you're not like that because I'm teaching you uh, that is not a nice thing to do. Uh, humillar, to humiliate someone. Ah, oh, this is, I, I like this word, especially today. Humor, right? It's, uh, in English, it would be more like mood, like good mood, bad mood, not bad humor. Maybe, yeah, maybe that too, bad humor. Like, it doesn't have very, like, I have some friends that have terrible humor, like, horrible. <laughs> like, or you want to pull your hair out. <laughs> um, por ejemplo, hoy estoy de buen humor. Today I'm in a good mood. But sometimes I'm not in a good mood. I'm in a bad mood. I'm upset. A veces me pongo de mal humor. A veces me pongo de mal humor. But most likely or more often, I'm in a good mood. Estoy de buen humor. Muy bien. Estoy de buen humor. Estoy de mal humor. Now you have two very good phrases. Estoy, I am, de buen humor. I'm in a good mood. Estoy. The mal humor. I am in a bad mood. Two excellent phrases to tell uh, your colleagues, maybe, or your friends. Uh, no me hables hoy porque estoy de mal humor. Don't talk to me today because I'm in a bad mood. <laughs> so better you get away. Um, de buen humor. Hoy estoy de buen humor. Ana está de buen humor hoy. Qué bueno. Muy bien. To speak, hablar. Now, when I say, yo hablo español muy bien, I'm not going to say, yo hablo español muy bien, because that's very incorrect. That's like no native speaker would say that. Yo hablo inglés. Yo hablo francés. Yo no hablo francés. Yo hablo español. Very good. Now I, 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 I look like Pimsleur or like something like that. Yo no. Uh, um, habitar, to inhabit. Uh, usually, we, uh, we, we in Spanish, this verb is used for animals, like the habitat, not very often for people. Habitar. Hervir, to boil. Hervir. For example, this morning, I boiled some eggs. Herbí unos huevos para comer huevos duros. Very good. Very healthy. Uh, huir, to flee. Huir. How do I say it? Huir. Huir, no, huir, no, huir. Very good. Just remember the difference between these two vowels. Huir, very good. Oh, and I, one of my favorite, cacahuate. In some countries, in Latin America, they call it maní. Maní, maní. Oh, many, <laughs> I wrote many. Maní, with an accent mark, M A N. I, with an accent mark, mani. In Mexico, we call it cacahuate, peanuts, cacahuate. Por ejemplo, esta semana, this week, I made dulce de cacahuate, peanut uh, uh, candy, right? Dulce de cacahuate. Now, if you see the difference from the words we have seen so far, is that the H is in the middle, still. Do you see, I say ka, ka, and I jump to the u, uate. This is like for, for my tongue, it's invisible. <laughs> for my eyes, I see it. But I know, oh, that letter H in Spanish doesn't have a sound. So I jump it, okay? I skip it, I, I ignore it, I pretend it's not there, right? When you see someone and you don't want to say hi, how do you do it? Right? You can you do that to the H in the middle of a word. Marihuana. Now, weed. We don't say marihuana. Some people say marihuana, actually. But, you know, um, it's written marihuana. So you don't really pronounce the H. 
The people who says marijuana is like they put a G or something like that in their pronunciation. This is a correct way to say it, so you can use that. You need to say inhale or exhale. I didn't write it because you know how to write that in English. I don't have to tell you that, right? Because you're very smart. Inhale, exhale. Now, in English, I say inhale, right? Inhale. I, there's like a like a hello, a sound there. Cuando, cuando digo, when I say, cuando digo inhalar, I do not pronounce the H because I'm pronouncing it in, in, in Spanish, even though it's very close to English. Different pronunciation. Very good. Exhalar. Exhale. Exhalar. Same I did in cacahuate or in marijuana. Exhalar. I skip the H because it doesn't have a sound. Now, uh, rehén, hostage. Now you see action movies, they're like always hostages, right? Uh, rehén, again, I don't say rehén, no, I said rehén, like a double E, rehén, rehén, okay? Zanahoria, mmm, qué sabrosas las zanahorias, qué sabrosas. Muy sanas, it's very healthy. Carrots, zanahorias. I'm not saying zanahorias. I have never heard, like I have never heard that in fact. I think for most people it's quite uh, simple to, to, to know that uh, the H is not pronounced. So it's zanahoria. Uh, and now we go to almohada, pillow. Now I'm very, very particular with pillows. Maybe you too, almohada. Mis almohadas have to be soft and not too high, etc. Almohada. It's kind of a luxury thing, right? Oh, very interesting. A lot of words from Spanish, for example, that have to do with luxury um, came from, from Arabic. And so almohada, alaja, like jewel, joyas, we say it to alaja. But besides the H uh, there that comes from Arabic words, a lot of words that start with A-L in Spanish. Alfombra, carpet. Alcoba, it's like a, alcoba is like where you come out like a, uh, I forgot the name in English, but when you come out and, and, and see uh, from your balcony, it's like a, a, like a balcony. Mm -hmm. Come from Arabic too. Um, as others come from Greek, we'll see here, they come from Greek. Many come from Latin, we're, we're going to see that too. Uh, almohada, right? Pillow, I'm not pronouncing the H. Oh, one of my favorite things, not because it's useful, <laughs> I just wanted to tell you why. Because aleli, it could be written with H or without an H. Aleli, it's a flower. And I'm telling you this because one of my favorite songs is Lindo capullo de aleli, si tu supieras mi dolor, Correspondieras a mi amor. I'm not going to tell you the whole song, but uh, that is a flower. And the, the singer is talking about like a cocoon of a flower. Um, and, and he's asking, if you know my pain, you would correspond to my love and you will calm down my uh, suffering. <laughs> very romantic. Um, very good, Aleli. You don't need that word. I just wanted to, to sing some songs for you too. If I'm teaching the age, that's why. Oh, hipopotamo. <laughs> now, for example, historia, where is historia? Uh, historia, history, hotel, <clears throat> and hipopotamo. As a Spanish native speaker, one of my all, uh, frequent mistakes where I say, oh, I like history. You know, when I start, started studying English, why? Because we do not pronounce the H. In English, the H has a sound. So that's why there's, there's a mix between languages, right? Like for me, it was like, oh yeah, history, history, right? Same here, I always say uh, um, hippo. I, uh, before I used to say hippo, because in Spanish we say hipopotamo. <laughs> Very good, like the super uh, um, fat fat animal, hipopotamo, el horoscopo, the horoscope, again, silent H, horoscopo, now I'm Libra, 
what are you? <laughs> but not, not very into that. But you know, when you read your horoscope, oh, today you'll be happy. Oh, today you'll find someone who you really like and all that stuff, right? I can read uh, with uh, eyes closed. Horoscopo, hepatitis, it's an illness. Probably if you go to Mexico and then you live in the States or Canada or the UK, what does the doctor say? Oh, you got to take the hepatitis vaccine. You cannot go to those places. Just like that. You cannot, you can't get some illnesses there. Everybody's infected there. Everybody has that hepatitis. Oh, not really. But I guess it's healthy to get it. I've never got a shot of hepatitis and I don't have that. Uh, my friends are Mexicans. They don't have that either. But, you know, in... Uh, countries like our develop, uh, they said the others have hepatitis, so you might be getting a shot. That's where you hear that, uh, that, that, that word, esa palabra. Now, many, many words uh, that are written start with H. Uh, hepatitis, hemostasis, they come from Greek, right? From like all those... Uh, uh, doctors I, the, who study medicine, like the first um, research, the first uh, ideas of medicine, they start with H. It, in, in Spanish, we were not going to pronounce it, but in English they do. So just be careful when it comes to those like uh, illnesses, don't pronounce the H because you're going to be speaking in Spanish and Espanol. Very good. Now, we got to one that is funny, right? Hamburguesa. Many people say hamburguesa. But no, I know it was an English-speaking creation. It was probably. I'm not sure. And it's hamburger. But we don't say hamburger. We say hamburguesa without the H. As if it had just, as if it had the A to start, right? So the H you're going to ignore it. Hachis, right? All those like Baudelaire and they like to smoke that to write poems and all that stuff, right? They use smoke hachis. Uh, I think in English you say hachis or something like that. Uh, but here I'm saying that hachis. I'm pronouncing it as if in Spanish I would be using a J. Hachis, right? Hawaii, same thing. I'm pronouncing the H as if in Spanish I would be listening to a J, Hawaii, Hitler, right? We don't say Hitler, we say Hitler too. If you read, you're going to read a speech about Hitler in your, uh, in your, cla in your classroom, um, you're going to pronounce the H. Oh, now I remember something. When I was in high school, I was Ho Chi Minh because in history class, you have to like pick a character and here and there. And I was Ho Chi Minh. And, I pronounce the H, right? Even though it's Vietnamese, I say, oh yeah, I'm Ho Chi Minh. Soy Ho Chi Minh. Um, so you pronounce the H. Now, what happened here? Like, why is this all this story about, oh yeah, I have a bunch of words and you just pronounce them and it's silent. Well, what I'm going to tell you is, if you compare these words, right? All these words I wrote here, which have different uh, ancestors, which come from different languages and are part of the Spanish vocabulary, and some of them are just particularly Spanish. And you compare to this, that I'm saying, yes, here you pronounce the H, here you don't. And you see how many, in, in how many words you didn't pronounce the H, in how many words you pronounce the H. Now, what's the conclusion? Yes, 99.3757% of the time, you are not going to pronounce the H because as I said in the beginning, the H is silent. It's H muda, doesn't have a sound. In the rest of the 99.375%, you are going to pronounce the H, but those words are going to tell you right away, this, uh, this word is pronounced with the H, like with the because it's either you know, a character or a word that comes from a different language that is a contemporary, or it just like it was adopted in a way that it didn't lose the sound from English, for example. Now, if, for example, uh, I'll give you one that I didn't write because it's not very related, but home run, right? Like the football thing, home run. Uh, it, it transferred as hon run with a, with a J, hon run. 
right? Why? Well, because as I said, the H in English has a sound that is more equivalent to the J in Spanish. So home run became honron. And highball, you know, that when you have a highball, <laughs> un highballito, un highballito joven, un highball, it's also like that, high ball, right? Very good. High ball and, uh, and, 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 and home run. Very good. Well, um, me gustan las hamburguesas y también un highballito, a little highball. The trick is, many words which have a u a, u e, u i in the middle, like cacahuate, um, and many words that start with e a, e e, are going to have an h very often. And the ones that start with um or ect, and these ones are because they usually come from Greek or from Latin directly. Now, this is a trick just to write it, right? But more often, because you now know that the H is silent, when you read something, you're not going to pronounce it 99% of the time. But when you have a question, you do have to go and look up in the dictionary or Google it or something like that, because it's not easy to see, uh, oh, am I going to write an H? Well you have to look it up. Now, if you are reading it and you're looking at it, then you know the H is silent. And basically, I wrote this lesson because many of you compare this or find an English equivalent right away because the words are very similar. So you, in English, like English speakers, tend to pronounce it. But you have to forget that. From now on, you're going to know the H in Spanish does not have a sound. No tiene sonido. Por eso, that's why we call it, le llamamos la H muda, the mute H. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you would like to send me a comment or some examples, I would be glad to uh, read them and reply. Uh, if you like my channel, subscribe to my channel and donate to my channel. And I hope to see you soon in the next lesson. Gracias y adiós.